Welcome back. In this video, we will look at the switch statement in Dart. So let's consider the coding that I have here currently. I've declared a number as a constant and I've assigned the value of 5. By now we know that this 5 is an integer, so Dart will automatically infer the type as integer. Then I send that integer number into my if statements to check. So in this case, I'm testing if the number that we have here is equal to 1, I'm going to print out you entered 1. Else if the number is equal to 2, we're going to print out you entered 2. Else if the number is 3, we're going to print out you entered 3. And then the else means that this statement is false, that statement is false, and that statement is false. And then at the end, if everything is false, we print out you did not enter a 1, a 2, or a 3. So just remember again that if we take if this one is true, it will only print out you entered 1 and it will skip the rest. Because this, if this one is true, none of the rest needs to be executed. The same as if this one is false and it goes on and it finds that number is equal to 2, it will print out you enter 2 and then ignore the else if and the else at the end. Now let's see how we can convert this now using the switch statement. So the switch statement works as follows. It also uses your two curly braces, just like your if statement there. But you basically do all the if statements in one block of code here. So into the switch statement, we can now pass that variable. And that is the thing we will need to test against certain cases. So I'm going to type case there. And that is my first case. And that's basically asking this first question. Is the number equal to 1? So I'm just going to say case 1 with a colon and then go on to the next line and do what I want to do. So this is the same as saying if number equals 1. So I'm passing in number if the number is 1, the first case. Then we're going to do something. So then I want to print that statement. So let's print that out. And then very important, after every case we need a break so it can break out of the whole switch statement if this one specific case was true and that's basically also what happens here if this one is true none of this rest will execute and that's the same functionality we get with the break statement there so if this one is true it breaks out of the switch just print or if if the number is equal to one it will just print out you entered one and break out of the switch totally and then carries on coding uh, from this line on Okay, so let's add the other cases also. So the next case, case 2, so if it's a 2, then we're going to print out you enter 2. And remember your break. Then let's go to case 3. And we will print out, if it's a 3, it's going to print out you enter 3. And let's break again. Now... We've got all the different cases. We tested for 1, we tested for 2, and we tested for 3 like in the if statement. And we printed out what we wanted. So how do we do the else part here? So it means that if, if it was not a 1, and it was not a 2, and it was not a 3, what should we do then? So for a switch statement, we call that the default value. So that's the same as basically just using this last else. And we will also print out what that last else would do. And we can just print out. Now, you are able to add your break statement there at the end just to break it out. But because this is the very last statement of your switch, that last line of coding with the break is not needed at all. Right, so let's see if we run this, if we actually get exactly the same output for both. So you can see both prints out, you did not enter 1, 2, or 3. So the first one is the if statements. It prints out, you did not enter 1, 2, or 3. So how did it get to that? The number is 5, so it's not a 1, a 2, or a 3, so it prints out, you entered 1, 2, or 3. The number here is also the same value, 5. It tests for a 1, it tests for a 2, it tests for a 3. None of them is true, so it will go to the default. You did not enter 1, 2, or 3. So let's say we make this one a 2. Then both should tell us that we entered a 2. And if we make this one a 3, then both should tell us that we entered a 3. Now let's look at a, at a few comments that I've added now here. Uh, just on a switch and some rules on a switch. So the first one there is they can be any number of case statements within the switch. So you can see there's case 1, case 2, case 3. The same as with these else if statements where we've got testing for a 1, a 2, and a 3. We can have different case statements here or different cases here, and I can add as many as I want. 
just like you could add as many as you want of these else if statements. The case statements can include only constants. So these are should be constant values, something that cannot change. It cannot be a variable or an expression. The data type of the variable expression, so this one there, that data type, and the constant expression must match. So if this one is declared as an integer at the top, so um, remember Dart will automatically infer it being an integer, so it's declared as an integer at the top, then if that one is an integer, the cases that you're testing against should also be integer values. Unless you put a break after each block of code, the execution flows into the next block, which means that if I remove this, actually Dart will give you an error if you remove that. Uh, let's just see. It gives you an error there. It says the last statement in the case should be a break, a continue, a rethrow, return, or throw. So in this case, it actually doesn't want you to run this coding at all because it doesn't make sense. But we'll do an example after this one now where we can actually leave out the break statement. So normally you would add a break statement after each block of code and then the execution flows. It flows into the next block if you leave out the break statement. But we'll look at that example next. The case expression must be unique, which means that I'm testing for a one there. I cannot test for a one there again and a one there again. For example, if you take a number equals one and you test for number equals one again and you have two different values, it just doesn't make sense. So the same in your case, but these values must be unique. And then the default block is optional. You do not need to add this default block. You could have had a fourth case there instead of the default. And uh, in our case, the default worked perfectly, but you don't need to have the default there, just like you do not need the else statement there as well. Right, so let's look at an example where we can actually leave out the break statement. So I'm going to start with, uh, let's declare it as a constant again. And let's use a choice and we make the choice some character value or a string value. So let's look at the following example. Let me just copy quickly somewhere here. So let's look at the following example where we've got some options for a 20 megabits internet line megabit per second line for $30 per month, a 50 megabit line for $40 a month, and a 100 megabit per second line for $50 a month. So let's say we give the user the choice. He can choose between the A, the B, and the C. So let's use the switch statement, and we pass in the choice. So now what we've learned from the switch statement is that if this choice is of type string like it currently is, then my cases that I test for must also be string. So in this case, I'm going to test for the A there. So that's the first case. And we can print out something like um, you chose a 20 megabits per second line for an amount of. Now let's just use the escape character there to add that dollar sign per month. Right, so now we can add the, the break statement there. And then let's just carry on for the next case. So I'm going to copy and paste this because it's basically going to work the same uh, for this one. A, B, and C. So this one will be B and that one will be C. This one should be a 50 megabits per second and that one should be 100. Uh, this one should be $40. That one should be $50. Right, and then we can have the default one there again. And the default one could print out something like not a valid choice. Right, so let's see how this one works. If I run it now, we will still get you entered 3 and you entered 3 there. Uh, but you'll see there that we now get you chose a 20 megabits per second line for an amount of $30 because it's A. If I make that, for example, a B, I will get this printout. You chose a 50 megabits line for an amount of $40. Okay, so this one works quite nice. But what if the user enters an uppercase A? It will say not a valid choice. And that's probably not what you want there. So if he enters an A, which is lowercase, or an A, which is uppercase, then you want to still print out you chose this line. And this is now where we can leave out a break statement in a case. So I could add another case here 
and make that an uppercase A. So what will happen now is if we have the lowercase A there, if it goes into this case, it sees, well, okay, this is the one I want to execute, but because there's no break statement and nothing else that happens inside of it, it allows it, and it allows to also do the following case statement. Drop into it and then print out this part before it actually breaks. So this is a nice way of saying, let's test for both these values to print out one specific thing. So I'm going to do the exact same thing for this. So I'm going to say case capital B and then case capital C. So now whether I enter A uppercase or lowercase, B uppercase or lowercase, and C uppercase or lowercase, this will still work. So this is a perfect example of how you can use the cases without a break in between. So for this case, there's no break, but for the next one, there is a break. Okay, so we entered a lowercase a, and it said you chose a 20 megabits line. So let's make that an uppercase a. You chose a 20 megabits line. So you can see what happened now with the lowercase a. It went into this case, it saw it's true, it went into this case also because there's no break and it will run and do everything until it finds the next break statement and then it's it's out of the switch again. So this works quite fine, let's just do another one, let's just do C quickly. C, you chose 100 megabits line and let's have an uppercase C, should give us the same output. Right, and that is it for the switch statement. So the switch statement is very similar to your if else if structure where your last else at the end is your default value that is optional. So you can go through uh, this video again to make sure that you understand the switch statement. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video. See you in the next one.